What will you do if you're living in your camper, traveling the country, and then you get a call that a loved one back home is dying? Well, Paul and I are in that situation right now. We've never been apart this long that you're gonna be apart. No, uh, my weird word, I was only gone for three days last time. Yeah, so what's happening? Well, my brother called and said it was it's time. So I'm on my way to take care of him, you know, the last days that he's got. Welcome to the channel, I'm Liz. And these can be exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. But if you're a full-time RVer, you definitely need to have a plan in case for emergencies. If you're a regular viewer, you know that Paul is generally here with me. He's always here with me. But today he is gone. He has been gone for a few days. And if you saw our video from, I guess, three or four videos back, you saw that Paul's brother is dying of pancreatic cancer. Paul and I are full-time RVers. We've been on the road for two and a half years. Now, I've decided to make this video to give you some tips because it's a lot to think about, but if you have loved ones, it could happen to you. So think about all the people that you love, wherever they are in the country, wherever you are in the country. Who would you go back for if they were dying? Because now is the time to think about making the plan. Not when you get the phone call, but now. How would you do it? And since then, we've just, we've just been talking about what we're going to do, how we're going to get there, because I, you know, I feel the, the need to go and take care of it. Would you drive across country with your camper? Would you have enough time? We talked about taking the truck and... Yeah, it's a 16 hour drive, 1200 miles, 16 hours um, to get there. And, and, you know, of course, that's 1200 miles both, you know, in, in both directions. So, if you're a couple, would one person stay with the camper, like in this case, and then the other fly? One of the things that we talked about in a recent video, Bad to Worse, is, you know, what do you do when your home is on the road? and a relative is sick or dying. And that's exactly, you know, what we're facing. And, you know, in this case, we're, we're splitting up. And, you know, you're gonna take care of him for however long it takes. And so I'm gonna go ahead and give you some tips and things to think about. Tip number one is money. You definitely need to have some money set aside for emergencies. This is definitely something that could be a lot of money. If you're talking flying, hotels, storing the rig, rental car, that is, you know, a good chunk of money. So it might be a good idea if you don't have a lot of money to stay close to your loved ones. Go ahead and travel, but stay in that area so that you're within a day's drive because this isn't like a wedding or a grandkid being born. When someone's dying, it, it may be something where you don't have a lot of notice. The next thing to think about is your rig. If you are flying, then your rig is gonna to need to be stored. If you're only gonna be gone for a few days, you can probably keep it in the campground, but if you're gonna be gone for a couple weeks, maybe you're gonna stay around for the funeral or whatever, you're gonna to need to store the rig. Now, Paul and I are members of Thousand Trails. We get to camp for like $50 a month at 87 different campgrounds across the country. Most of them have RV storage. The ones that we've priced have been like $75, $90 a month. So if you're gonna do that with your rig though, the next thing you think about is what are you gonna do with what's in your rig? If you're gonna store your rig, you can't store it with food in the fridge. So you've gotta figure out what to do with that. And if you happen to be in a cold climate or if it's winter going on when this emergency comes up, then you will have to actually winterize your rig. So that's one more thing to do to make sure that the pipes don't freeze. The next tip is if you're like us, you have a pet, we have a dog. So if you're solo or if you're traveling as a couple, you can't just leave your animal. Uh, unless you have a very small pet, you probably can't fly with your pet. So you need to call around to for kennels or some kind of place that will take your animal. So now is the time to make sure that your pet's shots are up to date so that it can go into a kennel. 
The next tip a lot of people don't even think about is that you need a suitcase. You're living full time in an RV. Why would you need a suitcase? Well, here's why. So have a like a carry on size suitcase or a duffel bag, that kind of thing so that you have it just in case. It's one less thing to do when you get that call. You also need to think about where you generally camp. You may be far away from a major airport, so you'll have to work out how do you get a ride to the airport. The next thing to think about is having a plan if you decide to stay longer. You may not feel comfortable leaving at the agreed time. You may want to stay longer. If your loved one's hanging on, you may want to be there till the end, or there's a funeral that you want to stay for. Well, see, and that's the uncertain thing, even though you have a, a, a flight scheduled to come back in a week, if he is on death's door, you, you might need to stay. Right. Right, so it might be, you know, it might be weeks or so before we see each other again. It might be. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, it's, it, you know, we talked about it for three days, all the different ways that we could do this. So definitely have a plan that allows some flexibility in your travel schedule. Now, if you are able to visit your loved one with your camper, maybe you can even mooch dock in their driveway. One thing you might want to think about is getting a soft start. This will allow you to run your air conditioner on household current while you're in someone's driveway. This may be an absolute lifesaver for you if you're visiting in the summer. We have a video that we did recently all about soft start. It's easy and it really makes a big difference. <sighs> So my brother Peter has, uh, has passed on. He's, uh, he's no longer in any pain, which is good. Um, so. I'm glad you went down there and saw him again. That was good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was important that I get to, got to spend some time with him at the end, and, and uh, we both got something out of it. And, yeah. And so, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a reminder that life is short and it's meant to be lived, to live life to the fullest. And love is really what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, live, live your life for, for today. Don't, don't, don't wait for tomorrow. You know, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Right. And that's applicable if RV life calls you or whatever calls you. Get out there and, and do it while you still have the chance. You never know. I mean, you're just one phone call away, just one diagnosis away from whew, from yeah. hitting the end. Yeah. So. so we got the call, and, and he was gone in, in just under two months. Yeah, yeah. Well, if there's any tips that we've missed, um, let us know in the comments. Yeah, take care of yourselves out there, and, and uh, be kind to one another.